Hey guys, happy Friday. Welcome back to my channel. It's another rendition of Meal Prep Mania. So it's Friday and we gonna get high healthy today. What do you think I was gonna say, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know you people. So we're gonna get healthy today. I am gonna bring you three new recipes all involving buffalo chicken. So it is the buffalo chicken takeover this week. So let's get right into it. So first is a buffalo chicken salad. And I made this and my husband came home from work and immediately said, that lunch was delicious today. It is super easy to make. Uh, I tried to make it a little more complicated by making it in the Instant Pot and my sauce was too creamy. I had error codes beeping. I totally screwed it up, but I was able to salvage it. And I've given you the good recipe on BrioCD.com. So super easy to make, grill the chicken, you know, um, toss it with some Frank's Red Hot. Uh, you got some shredded carrots, celery, two kinds of lettuce, and some dressing, and you are good to go. It's light, it's crisp, it's refreshing. And let me tell you, the stats are amazing. So even with dressing, and I used, I just found this Greek dressing in the market, and these stats, it's 60 calories, uh, three carbs, you know, really, you know, good for salad dressings. So even with this dressing on it, the salad only has 210 calories. It has six grams of fat, eight grams of carbs, 28 grams of protein, and that's based on a four ounce meat serving. For my husband, I make double the meat. But uh, those stats are amazing. Let's compare that to a buffalo chicken salad at Chili's. Okay, so you're out, you're at Chili's, you think you're eating healthy, I'm eating a salad, I'm being good today. Wrong. Chili's Buffalo Chicken Salad has over a thousand calories, 72 grams of fat, 72. That is outrageous. Outrageous in general and outrageous for a salad, people. So that's what you think you're eating when you're eating healthy. You think, you know, a salad should be, but really, when you eat out, you never know what's in this food. There are so many hidden macros when you eat out. And this is why I tell you to meal prep. You know, everybody wants to lose weight, everybody wants to look good, but they won't, don't want to put in the effort. And meal prepping is so important because there are so many hidden macros and grossness in restaurant food. Sure, it tastes delicious, but there's a reason because it's loaded with fat, carbs, calories, and all, you know, bad stuff. So let's um, move on here. So buffalo chicken pizza is the next one. Pizza, 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 pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? So this next one is a buffalo chicken pizza and I did something a little different this time. I used Trader Joe's cauliflower crust. So all you gluten-free people, which I'm not, but it's really easy to be gluten-free uh, and I know a lot of people have issues Use this cauliflower crust. I've never tried to make my own. Why? This is like $3.99 at Trader Joe's in the frozen food section. And it was pretty dang delicious. And it's a great weekday pizza substitute if you're looking for, you know, if you want pizza. So it's a little, it's buffalo chicken, so it's a little hot and spicy. Uh, if you want more spice, you can do what I do to the buffalo chicken salad and toss that chicken in Frank's Red Hot as well. But I didn't need to. The sauce alone is enough. And these stats are also amazing. So for one slice of pizza, it's 105 calories. It's like one gram of fat. Compared to Papa John's small buffalo chicken, just one slice, has 250 calories, like eight grams of fat, like something, oh, 12 grams of fat. That is like, that's one slice of pizza. And who eats one slice of pizza? So it's more than like triple uh, the calories, almost triple. It's, I don't even know how, 12 times the amount of fat. So people make stuff at home. It's super easy and delicious. And if you have kids, they'll love making pizzas with you. So easy, it's gluten-free. Um, a hot tip about this dough. So this dough, you have to flip it halfway through. So you bake it for 10 to 12 minutes on 450, and then you flip it halfway through. Use like two spatulas and do it with a quickness. Give it a little speed. Because the first time I did it, I've been having a week. I've been having a little bit 
of a trying week and uh, I cracked the thing in half, okay, because I was too dainty with it. You gotta use two spatulas, use a little bit of speed and it'll be fine. The second time I did it, it worked perfectly. So just be careful. Even though I cracked it in half, it ended up being fine. There was a little slit um, while I was putting the toppings on it. But then after, after I cooked it again, broiled it, it was fine. So luckily I escaped that one narrowly, but uh, just, you know, two spatulas, flip it with a little bit of speed. And again, you can head to brieocd.com to get all these recipes and see the nutrition comparison side by side. I have a nice little chart for you to show you just how bad it is to eat out. Okay, so you don't want cauliflower crust, okay? I heard someone say that. Did I hear someone say that? So you don't want cauliflower crust, but you still want pizza, and you want it homemade because you don't want to get all those calories, carbs, and fat that I just mentioned from Papa John's or wherever your favorite pizza place is. So use Trader Joe's regular dough. They have three different kinds, I believe, the last time I checked. You know, a garlic and herb, a regular, a wheat. I love the garlic and herb, even with buffalo chicken pizza. It just gives it a little bit more depth. So use one of those doughs and you just have to let it rise for 20 minutes first. Perfect timing to heat the oven up to 450 because it takes 20 minutes. So, and then you cook it, roll it out onto your pizza pan. That's another uh, key thing. It helps aerate the dough. Go to briocd.com and you can click on the word pizza pan in my blog and it'll take you to my favorite one. But um, spread it out on a pizza pan, bake it for about 10 minutes. Take it out, layer all your toppings, and bake it for about another eight or until the uh, cheese starts to golden, golden brown a little bit. So if you don't want cauliflower crust, I mean, it is delicious, but it's not the same as real dough. Uh, if you don't want cauliflower crust, but you want still a homemade, healthier version, try it with Trader Joe's dough. And again, I have those nutrition facts of each per slice on briocd.com under this um, buffalo chicken pizza blog post. Uh, one more thing about the buffalo chicken pizza. To make my sauce, I combine Frank's Red Hot with this Walden Farms dressing. I know a lot of people don't like to use this because there's literally nothing in it. I mean, these nutrition facts, there's zero, 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 zero. Uh, so people are like, what the heck is in that then? You know, I don't know, but I still use it. Uh, I don't know if you saw my other blog. Uh, or a video about you know how I used to be the calorie queen. So I'm kind of I'm I've broken away from that. I don't count my calories anymore, but I still have some of those old lingering habits with fat free, you know, no calorie, whatever. So I still use that. And I just mix up a little Frank's Red Hot and that. However, you can use your favorite blue cheese or even ranch dressing. Just make sure to look at the fat and the sodium content because a lot of these packaged dressings have high sodium. So moving on, buffalo chicken stuffed sweet potatoes. As you know, sweet potatoes have a ton of health benefits. People think potato and they get scared, but it's a super food. It is a great complex carb and you should be eating more of them. So this recipe, uh, the buffalo isn't overpowering. So if you are a buffalo fan and you've already written me off, uh, hopefully you're still here, the buffalo isn't overpowering in this one. I made the chicken in the Instant Pot with a little bit different of a buffalo recipe, so it's not as um, potent, and it's really delicious. You can make it in the crock pot as well. Literally just follow the same recipe, and instead of throwing it in the Instant Pot, throw the chicken and the sauce into the crock pot and keep it on low for about four and a half hours, and that should be sufficient for you to pull the chicken uh, after that is done. But again, I made it in the Instant Pot, super easy. It's a half hour. Uh, total. The sweet potatoes I made in the oven and you can make these in the instant pot but I made them in the oven they take an hour while the chicken was cooking because it gave me you know time while the potatoes are cooking I don't have to worry about them I was cooking the chicken pulling the chicken putting it back in and the potatoes were done but you can put them in the instant pot um, you just need a, the, either the tray that it came with or a little steamer basket and you put it, set it on high for like 15 minutes, depending on the size of the potatoes. Mine were all about eight ounces. About 15 minutes and bada bing, bada boom. So it's still an hour total of the recipe. You're just doing half of it potato, half of it chicken, instead of the potatoes in the oven and the chicken in the Instant Pot. 
So the, this again was really delicious and healthy. It is a little carb heavy because you're eating a full eight ounce sweet potato. So you can either cut that if you are, you know, cut it in half if you're looking for a lower carb option or use this as pre and post workout. So use this buffalo chicken sweet potato recipe for before you work out or after you work out to refuel your body. So there's a time and a place for everything. If you're not working out, maybe don't eat the whole sweet potato that day. Wait till the next day when you are. But um, this was the Buffalo Takeover Edition. If you like my channel, subscribe, please. Give me a thumbs up. Head to BrieOCD.com to get the full story and all the recipes. Meal prep mania. What, what meal prep mania?